need a shot out of here? Um, no, I'll be fine today. You'll be fine today? Yes, sir. Okay. Shalom. Shalom. How's everybody doing? All right. Um, I know we're probably a little short on time today. But we got more time in here, Okay. We, um, I know normally we have a chalkboard. I wanted to, definitely today I wanted to kind of go start going into the actual letters and things of the language and actually have you start to speak uh, some of the things. But even without going into the actual alphabet, there are some things that we can go into right now. Um, those who've been in the class or, or have been here on the Wednesday night, oh, you got your chart, <laughs> who have been here on the Wednesday night. Um, let me start out first saying, are there any questions of anything that, you know, thus far that you've heard since we started Sabbath school, since um, you've been in the teaching, or even some things that you may have studied um, and want to know more about? Any, any questions or anything you want more detail on? Anything at all? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, actually, yeah. Very much so. Uh, and that, actually, you can find a lot of instances in the Bible where um, there are objects <laughs> flying, and this is without modern technology. I was, well, what we know of in our day and time. Matter of fact, one of the one of the biggest, um, most vivid events is Ezekiel, Ezekiel one. A lot of people. Let me, matter of fact, let me read that. Um, this is this is something that I think a lot of people should pay attention to because it shows a part, a portion of what we were talking about Wednesday with El Elohim and. The council and things like that. So there, there is a. I'm going to go over some things. Uh, give y'all some verses to show some very in depth and in, in give you some more insight on what that what that is all about. Uh, because you got to know it, 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 when you begin to understand this council, you really, really begin to understand the position of the Son of God and what and who He really is. What. You know, not just the fact that he came down for salvation. I mean, if, if man had not fallen, we would not have needed a redeemer. But he still exists. And you need to know how and why and who and things like this. It's very much, it's very detailed. But let me, let me open this. Um, this is Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captains by the river of Shebar, that the heavens were open. The heavens were open. That's the first thing right there. Now this is Ezekiel. Now you got to really take this into a real account, like like what you were saying today, where people are witnessing the day. Take this back, the same thing back to him. Now this is a, is a man living thousands of years ago, with who's not seen anything, you know, we, we see planes and jets and rockets and things every day, so it's common to us. You know, satellites and, you know, that's, we see something flying right now, we won't think twice about it because it's common in our day and time. But back here, when you don't have any, you know, there's nobody manufacturing planes back three, four thousand years ago. So it, it, it's a different type of approach and it has to make you question, okay, how is this possible? And you begin to see. So, but let me keep going. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Joachim captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel and the priests, the son of Buzi, in the land of Chaldeans, by the river Shebar. And the hand of the Lord was upon him. Now, this is where it changes. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire. A fire enfolding itself and a brightness about it. He's he's looking at the heavens, the, the skies have parted, and he's seeing an object spinning like a whirlwind coming out of the clouds, coming down in front of him, and, it's, and it has its brightness all about it, and out of the mist thereof, as the amber of as the color of amber, 
out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Now the, picture yourself. You're standing on the river, man. You, you're on Cross Lake. <laughs> you're fishing. And the sky opens up. And this you, and now he's using words that he has in his vocabulary. He can't say, yeah, okay, and I saw this R2X22 come down. <laughs> you know, he doesn't, it, he's looking at something, trying to describe it. He's given the color of it. He's given this glowing, this light. The only light that they know of back then is fire. So they don't, he don't know light bulbs and lamps or neon or, or you know, anything like that. So he can only say engulfed in fire. Okay? So, but it's engulfed in light. But a light that he can't explain. And if you keep going, I mean, he and he goes into detail. I mean, if he, he goes into what they look like, and he said this was their appearance. He's giving a visual, descriptive appearance. They had the likeness of a man, the likeness of a man. Mithla anas, likeness, like a man, but not a man. Okay, and everyone had four. Faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished grass. And they had, and they had the hands of a of a man under their wings, and their four sides, and they had, uh, and they had, and they four had their faces and their wings. Uh, their wings were joined one to another. They, they turned not when they want. They went. They went. Everyone straight forward. Now you, you keep going. Keep going. Going. He's going to give a vivid description. But what he's looking at are beings not from the planet Earth. Okay, I'm, I just get right down to it. These are not. They are not human. They do not have. These are not children of Eve. Okay. And they have come down, and he watched them come down in front of him. You understand? And so you, now the thing is, who are they? And now he goes on. Of course, these are they. Are, they as you go on further in Ezekiel, you begin. It begins to tell you who they are, where they're from, why they're there. Um, but they they are from the kingdom. And many people look at the description of because one had the face. It says. Um, Yeah, and the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion. On, and on the right side, they had they, the, they four had the face of an ox on the left side, and they four also had the face of an eagle. <coughs> this same description of this being, that's, of these beings that's in front of them, are the same beings that go to Revelation that are standing around the throne. And because if, if you go into Revelation, when, when John gets up into the throne room, he starts describing what he's seeing, same way Ezekiel described. And he describes the throne and he describes the living beast around the throne, full of eyes. And he describes one with the has the uh, the head of an ox, one with the head of an eagle, one with the. Now it makes you wonder about something. Now this is Bible. This is biblical. But it's some things that, teachings that are a little bit from the priest. Of course, the priest understood these things. And they knew the nature of what these things meant. Even in, in the book of Daniel, it talks about the same thing. It talks about those same four living creatures. And these creatures are heads. They, they represent certain powers in the earth. And from these powers came kingdoms. This is all talked about in there. I don't want to go too deep, but I, you can you can research that and you see. Now, one other place that this is reflected more than anywhere in the physical that a lot of people have misunderstood for a long time is Egypt. When you look on the Egyptian walls, you see men with faces of lions eagle, cow. Now most people think, well, all oh, the Egyptians were worshiping animals. Got uh, human headed. No. No. It's the same thing as you look in Ezekiel, Daniel, Revelation. These are 
that they represented natural natural power. So I put it like this. I have family members in my family that have a certain personality, certain natures about them. You know, or because of their size, you know, we might call them my Uncle Tony, the big bear. We know him as a big bear, he just but he's a gentle bear. But he's not a bear. <laughs> we just you know the nature of him. Or we know some people who can be real underhanded, real sneaky and snakish. So we give them the nature of a snake. They're not a snake, but we'll call them here that snake. You know. But like Jesus said with the yeah, you broods and vipers, you you know, he's he's talking about their nature. Yes, yes. And so when what was what a lot of people what was happening in ancient Egypt, the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, the ones who were there before the dynastic families, before the Greeks came down and conquered Alexander the Great and all that, they did not worship animals. They did not worship the sun. They did not. There's a lot of things that got changed as people as people started coming into Egypt who did not belong there. Foreigners, invaders, and started taking over Egypt. Most of the part that we read, most of the things that we read about in about Egypt in the Bible during that time period, like from Moses, and you know, it was during that time that people, the people who were originally in Egypt from before, they were not there. Or the, the, they were not in control. God had turned against Egypt because of the, the powers that had came into Egypt and started taking control, perverted everything, and so God took his people out. The Israelites, let me, you have a lot of stories today, and there are reasons why these stories come, but they're not coming from us, they're not coming from, from um, the original people that this started from. The first place on the planet Earth Go back to, that's, again, I teach this all the time. Go back to Genesis. You'll find everything you need to know. If you look at, at the beginning in Genesis, the creation, the location of the garden, it tells you where it's at. It tells you exactly where it's at. People are like, where's the, where's the garden? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you something. People, what the problem is, is in our study. Hold on. Let me get another microphone. The problem is in our studying and reading. You have to, which is why it's so important. So important to know the Hebrew and what you're reading because it explains things without question. In other words, it, we have so many, we have so many different translations and manuscripts of the Bible that you, and this is by design. The enemy knows how to throw you off balance. If you are not learned enough to, you know, to know the language, he knows that he can throw you off balance by giving you false or mistranslation. This is why the, the Messiah said, "Take heed that no man deceives you. No man deceives you. Many are going to come in my name saying this and that. I'm, you, he's letting you know that there are going to be people in authority, control, principalities." powers that you're going to have to deal with and know how to deal with it, not by fist, but with your mind. You know, and so he's he told them back then, beware. You know, make sure you take you take precautions. So let me let me show you in Genesis. I want to uh, the location of the garden. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man who he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant. Oh, let me keep going. Okay. And a river went out of the garden to water the garden, and from hence it was parted and became into four heads. These rivers are locate, have been located. I mean, they've, all, they've never gone anywhere. They're still there right now. And uh, the name of the first is the Pishon. That is which encompass that which compasses the whole land of Havila. Havila is in Africa. Havila is the same way you would 
if you go into Africa now, around the Sudan area, around Kush, what they call Kush in the Bible, and this is, if you keep going right here, you see then around Habila, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, and there is bedellium and the onyx stone, and the name of the second river is Gihon, the same that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. The east of Africa. E Ethiopia is Africa. A lot of people try to, to separate, make us think that Africa, I mean, that Ethiopia and Egypt, and these are these are separate from Africa. No, they're all on the African content, continent. The continent is comprised of different countries, about 50 countries. We live in one country of the United States. This is one country with 50 states, but it's one country. The continent of Africa has 50 countries. And each country has states and cities and capitals. So they try to make you think that Ethiopia and Kush and Sudan and Egypt is separate. No, it's all on one continent. And what you're looking at, and this is where the, it's giving you the location of the Nile. And, and they keep going, the name of the third river, the fourth river, it's talking about the Euphrates. It's get all of that in that area from the mid and east Africa all the way over to what we call the Middle East. All of that was one big area that was that was basically settled and set up by God for the first inhabitants of this planet. Right there along what we call the Nile River. And you probably could read about what was called the, the Nilelic, uh, the, um, uh, the people of the Nile Valley, the Nilelic uh, people. This is the first, and these are Af pure Africans. So if you want to talk about the fir first, I mean, now scientists have caught up with this. They're now admitting, now, <laughs> admitting that the first people on the planet Earth came from Africa. That every, every geologist, every archaeologist, every scientist have finally come out and said, okay. And they came, the reason why they can't lie because DNA. They did it to themselves. You know, they wanted, they, they, you know, discovered the genome, broke it down, and now they got DNA. Okay, now it's turning back on them because everything that they tried to hide is now coming out with irrefutable evidence and proof through DNA. So they know now, yes, the first life on this planet, men and women on this planet, is Africa. And if in it is line, it lines directly up with what you see right here with the location of the garden with the, in the Bible. So that lets you know. If scientists are saying that the first men in Africa, and God saying the first people are Adamites, the Adama, that lets you know that the first people were black. The first people were Africans. It's, it did not say Europe. It did not say Australia. It did not say North America, Canada, anywhere else. It's mentioned it right here, and it gives you the names of the location. Ethiopia, Habila, Kush. That's all Africa. Okay? So, saying that, these first people being the African people. At this time, there was no language as of for mankind. There was no Hebrew, Arabic, Ugaric, Greek, Latin, because there were no people to speak it yet. Okay? So the first people who sprung up in that area at that time were what we know today were Kushites. Sudanese, Ethiopians, mainly the Ethiopians, and these became the the the, the foundation, the seeds of which the the Hebrew uh, seed came from. Because when you go, even when you look at Adam and Eve, they would Adam was taken and moved eastward, and it clearly says eastward in the garden. So he was separated from that first population to be the ones that God decided to groom to be the master of this planet, to be Lord, as we use the word Lord, to subdue the planet, Lord over this planet. And so, oh, okay, <laughs> no, no, wait. Yeah. 
of the Lamb. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Not true at all. Mm -hmm. So they took the more than slaves. They took so money too. So they displaced us. Yeah. <laughs> the richest people on the planet. You got to think now. When God created everything and created, He He did everything in the beginning, giving us the best. Because at that point in time, we were not in a fallen state. We had not. We, it, we, he and He put under our feet every rare gem and stone that exists in Africa. And He starts naming them right here. He said where well, there is gold, and the gold of that land is good, comparing good gold from not good gold. Showing you right there we had the best gold, medallions, onyx, onyx stone, everything. The the the, uh, the rubies, um, diamonds, all of this is found in Africa. Boy, oh, this class is worth something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. People want to because they want to see where everything really comes from. And if you notice, these these things don't exist like that in Europe. Europe doesn't have a, a big found foundation of wealth under the in the ground. There's no 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 oil. I mean, uh, no big giant de um, gold deposits. And and now they of course all over the world they have. You will find rare gems, but Africa is saturated with every rare jewel that exists. So let you know. God it intended for us to, to be, be wealthy. the wealthy, the wealthiest people on the planet. We would have everything under our feet, right there. So these, this being the first, and, and that's another thing that you mentioned too um, about Ham and about with Noah. See, uh, one of another misconceptions is that Noah had okay, Noah had three sons, and from them you have a white man, a black man. In the Asian. No. No, no, no. <laughs> the truth of the matter is now, first of all, if you if you really read this in to the point of understanding, it says when Noah was five hundred years old, he had three sons. Five hundred. Three sons. Now, I know every woman in here knows that you can't give birth and within nine months, you can only give birth once. <laughs> Well, well, now, if there's a one child, twins, triplets, quadruple, whatever, but if you are going to give birth once within you know, a year's worth of time. So when Noah was 500, he had three children. He had triplets. They were all the same race, like him, black. And from them, from them came the other nations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they just kind of break it up. But from them came the other nations of the world. And a lot of people say, well, how did we, where did white people come from? Well, how did, what's the difference? Well, I want to, it's all, everything is biblical. All you got to do is study it and read it. But let me, I want to read something to you real quick. And remember, when Ham, it says, Ham looked upon the nakedness of his father. Now, a lot of people think that Ham was looking at his father like in a, in a uh, homosexual type of way. That's not what the Bible says. Now, people can take it that way, but that's not exactly what the Bible says. In Leviticus, it tells you, as a matter of fact, it tells you to look upon your father's nakedness or to look upon your uncle's nakedness. Because it goes in detail, it says, is to sleep or have sex with your father's wife. Yeah. To uncover the nakedness of your father is to lay with your father's wife. Not necessarily being your mother, but your father's wife, if he has another wife. And that's what it says in Leviticus. So I'm just quoting Bible. But, you know, we get to, like I say, there's a couple of ways to look at that, but 
And that's when, when his brothers came in and they walked backwards with the sheet to cover his, to cover his, the nakedness of his father. It was covering up his father's wife, covering up Noah's wife. But we'll go, we'll keep going. But Ham, Ham, it says, looked upon his father's nakedness, basically way out of line. And, but it, it says, Ham was not cursed. It says, cursed be Canaan, which was Ham's son. Now, Ham is the, the progenitor and the father of the, as a matter of fact, if you, if you read where it says Ham's sons, it tell you who Ham's sons were. We, like we said, Cush, uh, Mishraim, which are, these are, this Cush, Mishraim, Foot, that's Libya. All of this is North Africa. These are African people, all of them. Ham, Shem, Japheth, Noah, Canaan, even Canaan. Now, if you, if you look on a map to see where Canaan Jerusalem, Israel, and all that is located. What they're not telling you is that that's not Middle East. The continent of Africa, the, the actual fault line that separates the continents from a continent, that little curve that all of, I wish I had a map to show you, but that little curve. Go get one. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a lot easier when you can see this. But that little curve where, where um, in front of, like where you see the, um, where you see the northern part, like Syria, and you come on down into Jerusalem, and, and, and all of that is connected directly into the continent of Africa. They're doing, archaeologists right now, they're finding people from graves that are pure Africans right in the heart of Jerusalem, right in, in Israel, because they have always been there. It's always been an African continent. It's never been anything else. The problem has been with the invasions of people. The powers kept switching, so you would have different people coming into the land who would want to rule there. And the biggest portion of the Syrians, you know, they came in and invaded many times, the Babylonians. So, but that land, the, the actual land is not a part of what we call India or the Middle East or Europe. That's Africa. All of that is Africa. And so when Ham, his children, they were the ones who spread up across the, the, the north, northern part of Africa and also up into Canaan. Now, as far as where we get white people, how what came about, well, see, the curse, when, when God said curse be Canaan, when he curses you, when he curses a, a seed, uh, and this is perpetual, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up a couple. So this is perpetuated uh, out throughout the, um, the Bible. But when he curses you, it manifests in the flesh. The, the curse will manifest in the flesh. And the manifestation of that curse we call leprosy, the old leprosy. Okay? It's mentioned many times in the Bible. There's a lep there's a such thing as called a leper, then there's leprosy which is manifests in the skin. And in Leviticus, um, make sure I'm in the right, because it talks about this a lot. When a man should have a skin of his flesh in the right, this is Leviticus chapter 13. When a man shall have a, in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of the sons of the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague and the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, blonde, turned white, okay? And the plague in, in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of the flesh, and in the sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up and have that have the plague seven days. And it's a pretty long thing, but if you keep going, what it's going to say is eventually, if this spot, this white spot in the flesh, now if you were white, if it were already white, you couldn't turn white. That's, that's one thing. It's just something to think about. They were dark-skinned people. 
He said this, this white spot in the flesh begins to spread over the body. I want to see if I can find that exact one. Begins to spread over the body. You get deep with us. <laughs> Le yeah, Leviticus 13. I'm looking at 12 right here. And it says, if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and a lepr leprosy cover all the skin of him that had the plague from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider and behold if the leprosy have covered all the flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that had the plague, and it's all and it and it's all turned white, and he is clean. What this means is at the beginning, when it first comes out, it starts to appear. He comes to, they come they take him to the priest. And the priest will pronounce whether or not this is a lep this is leprosy, clean or not. You know, and they will if they're not clean, they will be removed for seven days, come back again, and he will take a look again. And this said that if it gets to the point where it's covered all of the body, then what this and he said you have you the person is considered clean, but the person is they, they're in their gene and in their body they are carrying the curse of leprosy. But the the person, in other words, they're not sick. This is just the manifestation in their gene that's coming out of them of who they are. And this now, what we know this as coming out of black skin. Now today we call it uh, Villalago. There are many people, I, many people that we have. I, I have some in my family, very dark skin, but they have blotches on the body that are white. And the purest form of it that you will see is an albino. What, you, what they are talking about here is the albino. This is how the albino race started. And from, think about it. When you see an albino, what are you looking at? Most of the time, you, you're looking at a black person by, the, by nature. But their skin is pure white. Their hair is blonde. Their eyes are colored. We say gray or blue. Blue eyes, when you're looking at blue, you're looking at, really, you're looking at someone that has no color in their eyes. The only reason why it looks blue when you see blue eyes is because that is the first color in the, in the spectrum from sunlight that hits your eyes. So it, they, really their eyes are transparent. It would look spooky if you could see without the color their eyes. Again, we have color eyes. They can, and a lot of them, they cannot stand in the sun for very long. They cannot, the, they, can, they have to wear glasses. They cannot, they, they cannot be under the sun like a normal human. That's a curse. If you can't live in the place that God created you to be in, it naturally, that's a curse. Now, we're not saying that that person per se is cursed. What it is, that's the manifestation of that curse, cursed to be Canaan, coming out in the flesh. Which is why the Canaanites, and they'll tell you the Canaanites were one of, if, if during the time of Jesus, Everyone in that region, you, you, you had Greeks, you had Romans, and then you had the population. If you were not a Greek or a Roman, you were of color. I don't care what part from Africa to Asia to all up in Israel, if you were not Greek from the Greek Isles or you were not Roman from, or like an Italian, then you were black. You were a person of color. There were no other white people in the world other than Greeks and Romans, Europeans. They were the only Europeans in the region dealing with us at that time that were controlling us. Otherwise, everyone else, including Jesus, was black. When I say black, I'm talking different. We have different tones, natural tones, natural textures of hair. People looking at my hair think I'm mixed. Look at me, and my dad is dogging probably everybody in here. <laughs> yeah, and my mom was about my shape. Yes. I'm, I'm, you know, so we naturally have different shades, skin tones, textures of hair, eye colors. You go to Nubia right now, you will, you will see people who are jet, I mean, jet black, and but their hair is straighter than mine, and they got blue eyes. Yeah. They, they, and yeah, that's like, like my friends in D.C. Like, no, I'm, no, I'm not black. Like, 
I'm I'm over. I'm an Arab. Use a black Arab. <laughs> because it's and they don't identify because and it's true though. They because they know black is not a race. Black is just a description. You know, you have a place, you have a race. You your everyone in here can be traced back to a country in Africa. Okay? So you that's why they say that. No, I'm not black, I'm this, I'm that, I'm Ethiopian, I'm Kush, I'm yeah, and they are absolutely right. So, but it's showing you the diversities of who we are as a people. Now, that and, and that's how you get the, the, the white races. From from them, from that seed, they will go and mix in with other people. And then you would have, and that's how you get, Canaan had 11 sons. Just like we have the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, Canaan had 11 sons. There were 11 tribes of Canaanites. And they all had different shades of this, you know, if you want to know where the Germans come from, if you want to know where the Swedish, the Polish, go back to Canaan. And you will see where the European races come from. They come from us. They do come from, they, they hate to admit it, <laughs> but they come from us. We are the parents of the planet Earth. Adam and Eve, when God made Adam and Eve, they, or God would make Adam, and out of Adam and Eve, they were given the rulership of this planet. And from us, all nations, you know, came from black people. And that's and that's not anything about being, you know, prejudiced or pro-black and all this. It's just the truth. It's biblical, it's the truth. And you know, so now with that being said, one of the, the um, one of the things that in in the Hebrew when you go What's important about the Hebrew is finding that when you find these things, even in the time of Jesus. Now, Jesus had a very his he, he had his biggest challenges while he was on the earth was dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, as far as dealing with the word. Because most people did not at that time, you gotta understand, there were no, no, nobody was walking around with pocket Bibles back then. You know, to, to, to get, for one, the New Testament, you know, during that time had not been written yet because they were living it, and the old, what we call the Old Testament, were kept only in the, uh, in the synagogues or the temple. And, and a lot of times, the only people who could actually have a copy were kings because you, you, no one could afford, you, I mean, to make. A Torah, what they call the first five books, to make a Torah, you're talking about a flock of sheep that you would have to purchase to get the parchment. You would have to have barrels, I mean barrels of ink that has to be produced. Then you have to have a scribe to sit there for about a year and letter by letter copy each particular letter from a, uh, from an older Torah. This took money. Money that we don't even have today, you know, we could go to the store and buy a Bible for about, you know, twenty, thirty dollars. But back then, it cost thousands. What we would consider thousands. Only a king. Every time a king will go on the throne, they had to have their own copy of a Torah made for themselves. That was commanded by God. So if so, people didn't walk around knowing the scripture. So Jesus, a lot of the things that Jesus would contest the Pharisees about was their ways of doing things. Because God did give the priests a certain divine order. Go back in Deuteronomy, go back and, and you find out when the priesthood was being established and set up. He gave them certain abilities and powers to of their own to say, look, y'all are the council here. Okay? And when any situations would arise, people the people would come to them before coming to God. That's right. Okay? He gave them that. And but what began to happen as human nature <laughs> began to set in, egos set in, a lot of what they consider I mean, and what I mean by this, I mean if this is what this is what I'm saying. If 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 a priest, if a high priest gave Instructions to say, well, every time you get up in the morning and you get dressed, you put this on. And then after you put this on, you go over here and you do this. 
and after that you go do this. If the high priest made that establishment, then it became law. And everyone had to subject themselves to whatever the high priest said to do. And God said to do that. Now, of course, if the if this is a righteous person, a right, you, yeah, you, you, you will follow everything that they say do. These, this became what's called as, in Hebrew, takanot. The, ta, the, he, the Hebrew takanot, meaning the way of doing things by the priests of the temple. Takanot. Takanot. T-A-K-A-N-O-T. Takanot. Takanot. Yes, sir. Takanot. It means the way of doing things, or the way of go about doing things. The way of doing things, takanot. Right. The Proce way of doing things. Procedures. Yes. Procedures. Yes. And this became over thousands of years, another you know, couple of thousand years in the temple. This became the difference between the Torah, the written law, and what they call, and they're talking about, uh, uh, my scene called the oral law. So you had a written law, and then they made their oral law which is consisted of the Takanot, the Miocene, and other things that they would, as far as their way of doing things, mainly the Takanot, because that describes everything. And, let me, and what I mean by that, and Jesus recognized this, this is, this is how things were set up, but the people who were running the temple at that time were Jebusites, children of Canaan. Canaan had a son called Jebus. Yes. The opposite is really, and just being truthful, is actually the opposite. The richness of the black culture and so forth, you don't understand. Don't understand. And when the Bible starts talking about people like Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, and they're talking about the Bible, 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 
That's right. Sister girl was loaded down South Africa, where all of the richness of the world is. I mean, richness of spices. That's right. Gold and silver. Yeah. Look, this is what I tell my students. I said, look at you. 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 Right. Because the, the, we are, the people are going we to spend, spend money. money. <laughs> we spend money. We are the most, if they want to get grants from the government, who are they going to put in their, in their grant that? Black people. That's right. So and, and this is the teachers who go back to it. But we've been taught to stay away from Away from it. And see, that's right. It's time. Yeah. It's time. Because there are other things that are coming out that will, if, you, if you're not building yourself up to understand these things, right. it will. Yeah, you all the way down. We we're in we're in some times, prophetic times, that it's like it's come down to the wire. Right. It's like it's it's the boxing match now. It's and it's certain that's why again knowledge. God knows when things it, it, and when you go back over history, it, it just it all lines up. We see why certain things had to happen. And we see what took place before us with our people who were slaves, and you know, and, and so now we can see the difference that we we can read and get information that they couldn't get, and, and it makes it makes all the difference in the world because now we you, we're be, we're we're being we're being approached by the spiritual realm in a way that this and we have never been before, and I, and people don't see it because they don't understand the spirit. A lot of it is manifesting physically. But it comes from the spirit. It comes from the, spirit. and that's why God said it comes. You know, within the, the word will manifest in the flesh. Everything in the spiritual realm that is to come into this world through prophecy is going to manifest physically. And if you don't know what you're looking at, if you don't understand the prophecy, you won't understand what you're seeing. And that's what's happening in the world. There's a lot of things that's happening, and people don't. They can't link it. or don't know how to associate it with prophecy because they don't. They don't have that understanding. And Due to a lot of what what I'm about to show you here too, when Jesus was talking, he knew that the Pharisees, he knew that that's why he even said that if you're not of Abraham, you are your father the devil. He was a killer in the beginning. He's a you know he he's telling them straight to their face. I know you y'all walk around here with these robes and y'all are running the temple, but y'all are not who y'all y'all portrayed to these people to be. This is what he was saying to them that I know who you are. And, they, and because of them, now he, it wasn't a problem that they were not from the sea. The problem, he knew that they were Jebusites. He knew that they were not of Abraham, that they were of Canaan. They were Canaanites. When Abraham went and got them, they were up in the mountains. Another, another word where we use Caucasian. They were up in the mountains, crawling, this is in the Bible, crawling around on all fours, eating raw flesh. And you know you want to know where your image of the caveman comes from. There you go. Crawling around on this is in the Bible in Genesis. Crawling around on all fours, eating raw flesh. And they were brought down. He came, and they were in what we call the Caucasus Mountain. Caucasus, Caucasian, Caucasus, Caucasian, Caucasian people. Okay? Caucasus Asian meaning Dead or deteriorating Asian. You know, they considered us the first Asiatic black man. The people in that area were a Asiatic but black. Well, these people were Asian, but they were not black. <laughs> they were Caucasus Asian. Deteriorating. Dead, what they were called dead Asian. You understand? That's where the name Caucasian came from. And he brought them down out of the mountain, cleansed them up, and gave them positions in the temple to run the temple. And over the course of time, all the way up to Jesus, then these were the people who were still running the temple. And he said to them, two, two verses, and I'm closing this, two verses that he spoke. Whosoever, this is Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 15, verse 9, uh, yeah, verse 9. But in vain... 
they do worship me, teaching for doctrines of men, the commandments of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand what defiles a man. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Now, and what, and what, and let me, from there, keep that in mind, what he just said. And I'm going to go to Matthew 23, 1 and 3. 1 through 3. So. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to the disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Listen to this carefully. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That observe and do. But do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. Now, he's just saying. Now, now to the normal person, that might sound kind of confusing. Because he's saying, they sit in the seat of Moses. And all therefore whatever they bid you observe to do, you do it. And this is what we're talking about, the talking of, their ways. In other words, whatever they, you know, if they tell you to tie your left shoe first and then you right, then, then that's what you got to do. And, and they actually have that, <laughs> they have that in their oral law. But um, what he's saying to them, whatever they bid you to do, you do it. But the problem here is how can Jesus be telling us to do what these people say to do? And, they are, and then in the same verse, he's saying that they're corrupt. And that they don't do what they suppose that they themselves say they're supposed to do. Well, if you go, and this is this is why the Hebrew is so important. If you go into the Hebrew of Matthew, into this same scripture, what it's saying is that the scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. All therefore whatsoever he in the Hebrew it says, all cool. Which is in the Hebrew who? He, which is who? The word who? If it was they in Hebrew, it would have been the word whom. And I know you, I, I, I want y'all to see, but when I'm telling you, so next when we'll go over this and know that you see it. But in the Hebrew, it's saying whom? I mean uh, who? Which means he. So what Jesus was? This is uh, showing you how one word in translation. Without you knowing Hebrew, one word in translation can change the meaning of a whole entire paragraph or phrase or, or sentence. What he's saying here is, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses, whatever Moses prescribed, because Moses is the one that brought the law. So whatever Moses said to do, that you do. But what these Pharisees are trying to give you to do, you you don't you don't follow them. That's what. It, and if you go back, and it says, "Observe all therefore whatsoever they bid you, that they right there are supposed to be he, which is Moses. All therefore whatsoever Moses bid you, observe that, and observe that, and do. But do not be after their works, meaning the Pharisees, for they say and do not. This is how we." Many places like this in the Bible can can be confused because he's saying the way of, of what's called their takanot is what we talked about earlier. He's saying do not do their takanot. In other words, do not do the things as prescribed in the way that they do, but do as Moses has said to do. So this is this is just an example of some of the places in the Bible where you see that scripture through translation can change and give a different give a different view. Well, I'm I know we kind of going over the time, but I'm I, I wanna, I'm gonna stop right there. Um, hopefully, I hopefully I, the the next class I want to actually have some. Some things that you can see. I want to have some presentations of some things that I can show you. Yeah. The, the alphabet. Um, actually, I, I do. I, I'll get it to you before you leave. Um, and that's another thing. Yeah, we did because we we want to go into actually reading and writing the language.
So that's something uh, that's that's going to be very, very, very important. Um, right. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yourself. Yep. And that and that has that's what's become the the biggest stumbling block for black people. We don't. It's hard when you you know we. And it's but it should at the same time it should wake us up to to think. Okay, how come he even here in America? You run into a Chinese person, they know their culture, they know where they're from, they know who they are, everything. You run into a Spanish, a, a, a Mexican, anyone, Italian, they can tell you about themselves. But we, as black people, we don't know anything further back than slavery. Well, I mean, really, if, I, if you go to someone and ask them, tell me something about the history of black people, they're going to take you to the plantation. Because <laughs> that's as far as they know. Yeah, and that's all we've been taught. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All white. The black face. They don't, they don't understand it. White, yep. I'm telling you. Who who? Not anymore. Yeah. Tommy Hill figure. Versace. Real quick, before, uh, before we close out, I want to one thing about these the alphabet. The the alphabet you know today, A B C D E F G, comes from here. Believe it or not, is when we say alphabet comes from alpha beta, which is the Greek, which is I'll be sure you, which is <laughs> which is alif bet. The first two letters on this chart. Go now. I, I, I think I need to tell you this too. Hebrew is not written or read like we read from this side, from the left side to the right. That's not how it's done in Hebrew. Everything in Hebrew, in the Bible, everything is written this way. So when you start your alphabet, this is the letter A here. That's an A called Aleph. In the when in the Revelations when it says, uh, "I'm the Alpha and Omega." 
those are two Greek letters. The first letter alpha comes from the Greek, that's the Greek letter alpha, comes from the Hebrew letter aleph. See that first letter, aleph, I'm the aleph, alpha, aleph. And the omega, meaning the last letter is to, the T at the bottom right here. So that is the beginning, and the, when they say I'm the beginning and the ending, it's talking about the beginning and the ending of the law of the Torah, the law, the alphabet. That's why Jesus said not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law. What he was, that's English. What he was saying in Hebrew was not one yod, the letter Y, or one tall. Now, now listen to the word he's in English, not, not one jot. Hebrew, not one yod. Jot, yod. He's saying, what he's saying is not one letter <laughs> from, the, from the law is going to pass. And the law is always going to be. You can, I, I, I would beg anyone to show me a city that you can go to here in the United States and when you get there, you don't have to obey the law. Mm. That you can just run around and do what you want. I, I don't know a place on the planet Earth that you just go around and just do what you want. Even if they don't have a universal city code, the village gonna have their own law to deal with you if you get out of line. So there's no escaping or getting away from the law. Jesus said, I did not come to do away with the law. I came to fulfill it. To fulfill something, it means you got to carry it out in fulfillment. You can't walk around and say, well, I'm not under the law anymore, so I'm not, I don't have to worry about that. No, you, you do. And Jesus made that clear. But studying, studying the Torah, the Tanakh, in the Hebrew language, this is what you're going to start with. Um, and again, from the, from right to left, the first letter is A, Aleph, B, Bek, G is Gimel, D, Dalet, and on, you go all the way through. But it's much like English. It's not very, and when I say it, because English comes from it, Greek comes from it. When you put words together, for example, um, the word fish in Hebrew is dag. Dag, and it's spelled Dalit. See the, G, the D, Dalit, Aleph, A, and Gimel, D A G, Dag. When you see it written, it looks just like the the D right there that you see, the Dalit, the Aleph, and the G. So it's putting, making a word or saying something is is the same as constructing words in English. It's not much different at all. It's very in, easy. The letters look funny because you know, we don't we use the our alphabet, but just like we learn alphabet as children, this is we learn English as children. You didn't wait till you got grown to learn how to talk. You were talking before you even knew how to read. You can hold a conversation. Same thing here. You can learn this language very easily. It's not hard. And we will. That's what um, again in the next class. I want I wanted to do it today, but I wanted to have a chalkboard so I, we can talk some, about some other things today. But I want to get into actually speaking, y'all, speaking and reading, starting at the beginning with uh, with Barashi, Genesis, and going into you know the, the verses. At least having the first those first two verses, the Barashi bara Elohim et Hashemayim bara Haaretz wa Haaretz hayatatohu vavohu hakoshek mer kepet havi pinei tahom. Meaning, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was, the earth was with, without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the waters. You can get that much. You'll, when you learn that much, you're going to, you'll begin to see, okay, this is really easier than I thought. And so that's why I want you to get that first. And that, that Genesis is going to open up a lot of what's going on Wednesday night when I was speaking about things that's going on in the world today with the Illuminati and and all kind of things you're seeing on YouTube. I know people all over YouTube about this and that. It, there are a lot of things that's going. There's some truth in some things. There's some. There's a bunch of lies, and you need to be able to discern. So knowing what took place in Genesis, what really went down in Genesis, is going to tell you a whole lot about what's going on today. Uh, with the Nephilim, we're going to talk about the Nephilim. Genesis chapter six. Uh, the sons of God that came into the daughters of men and had children. A lot of people don't know about this. A lot of people don't even know that this was even possible. That the sons of God came down into the daughters of men. A lot of people think that when it says sons of God, they're talking about the children of Adam. No. 
it is very clear they're talking about the angelic beings that came down called Nephilim who came to the Nephilim or Nephil means to come down to descend come down out of the sky to the earth so Nephilim means those who came down out of the sky to the earth and they copulated with the daughters of men and had what's called Gibor, Giborim, mighty men in the earth and they became the first human god, god human human god rulers demigods we're going to talk about all that because that they that seed of beings is still walking the planet amongst us right now you probably won't know because they look just like you they look just like us but they they are from that seed and you know most people say well didn't god wipe them all out with the flood no if you go <laughs> and he even says it because even after noah came off of the the boat came out um off of the ark you go a few chapters down a few verses down and they go into a land where there are giants yeah. still living the rephamim and the zemzamim and these are these are beings who are not of the seed of eve they are not totally human beings okay yeah so I, but yeah, but I, she's telling me now it's time to go. But I, I want y'all to really, really let we gonna get into this. And when you when you read the Hebrew, you'll be able to see a lot of these things more clearly. So we're gonna that's what we'll do in the next class. We're gonna start actually reading and writing. All right. Thank y'all for listening. <laughs>